G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Monday evening here in Australia, uh, and I guess the big story is at the moment, is that we know that, well, hopefully you know, that Ledger was uh, hacked a little while ago. Now, there's nothing wrong with the security of the ledgers that we know of at the moment, but our personal data was obviously, yeah, taken from there. And now, according to this story, the... Uh, the person, the organisation, whoever that hacked Ledger has now put out uh, personal information of, of of everyone. Basically, it's out there on the net. So, look, that's really, really disappointing at the moment, uh, and a little bit scary as well, because it means that if you've bought a Ledger, they have your personal details, and sometimes it's even your physical address. So people may, you know, go and find, yeah, you know, addresses, and then start, you know showing up to your house, you know, trying to, I don't know, kidnap you, extort you or something like that. And there is a story in this about that, a gentleman over, uh, I think, in Malaysia or something. So look, this is really, you know, the only story that, you know, is, you know, really kind of sticking out at the moment. It is a weekend and, you know, stories are usually pretty quiet on a weekend. Uh, but this one is really disappointing. And I'll go on and read a little bit. So Ledger user... Ledger users threaten legal action after hacker dumps personal data. A cybersecurity expert claimed the affected users would be targeted online and in person now that their personal information had been made public. The hacker that uh, breached hardware wallet provider Ledger's marketing database earlier this year has released personal data for thousands of users, prompting many to threaten the firm with a class action lawsuit. According to a tweet from network security firm Hudson's Rocks Alon Gal, a hacker allegedly behind the breach of personal data from hardware wallet Ledger in June, has made all the information they obtained available online. This reportedly includes uh, over a million email addresses from subscribers, uh, Ledger newsletter and hardware wallet orders with information including email addresses, uh, physical addresses and phone numbers. Uh, so again, that is disappointing. Now it goes on here to say that there was a gentleman uh, in Malaysia uh, who was actually kidnapped so I think it might be all the way down the bottom Singapore sorry so some ledger users have pointed out that phishing attacks are just one possible threat they may face now that their physical addresses are addresses are public people with a large amount of crypto holdings run the risk of being kidnapped and held until they give up their tokens as was the case with Singaporean entrepreneur Mark Cheng in January this is a serious breach and I am concerned that people will now have our addresses, said Twitter user Paul Smith. What's stopping them from knocking on our doors? Saying sorry, uh, saying sorry, frankly, isn't enough. Look, that would be uh, concerning, you know, if someone shows up at your, jaw, at your door. I mean, the pr chances are, you know, not all that high. I'm sure, you know, it, it'd... You know, what are the chances that they know you're one of the people who's literally got, you know, millions of dollars, you know, worth of crypto? Uh, I certainly don't have any of that. So if they're going to come robbing me, rob me for my crypto, then number one, good luck to them. And number two, you won't be getting away with that much anyway. Uh, you know, maybe five or ten years now I might have life-changing, you know, crypto. But at the moment, uh, it's certainly, yeah. Good luck to them is all I say. But look, it is worrying though. People now have your name, possibly your date of birth, your address, your email address and all the rest of it. I mean, there is a scam going around now by uh, via email uh, and I received it saying that, you know, you've got to upgrade and click on this link and all the rest of it. I deleted it straight away. I don't, you know, I don't ever click on any links uh, that I get from places via email because no one wants you to click on their links they want you to just go straight to their you know natural website uh, they won't generally provide links and they won't ask you for personal information and all the rest of it they've already got it so yeah beware i literally got that uh email just today again saying you know oh look there's been a data breach what we need you to do is put in a four pin code and all the rest of it please click on this link delete that's the first thing I've done. And look, just check the address as well. Most of the time, uh, it looks very similar to the ledger uh, email, but it'll be slightly different. And sometimes it'll just be nothing even close to it. So that's all you've got to do. And look, just don't click on any links. Go straight to the actual web page uh, itself. Uh, check Twitter, go to their official handles, uh, and there'll be information there as well. But again, it is just disappointing. You know, I've had constant 
phishing emails and I constantly have to you know report them and block them and all the rest of it and, and it is frustrating particularly for anyone new who maybe doesn't know better uh, yeah it's very hard for them they would most likely fall for it and just click on the link and then you know lose everything and yeah unfortunate and very disappointing from ledger as well you know they considering they you know all about security for crypto you think their own security with our personal data would have been uh, a lot yeah higher than what it was so sad and sorry for ledger that's really going to make it harder no wonder they're selling their ledgers for like 40 percent off at the moment that's probably what they need to to try and you know restore a little bit of faith from uh some of their members and look a law uh, a class lawsuit action against them uh, wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, you know, particularly if anything was to ever happen to someone and people showed up now screaming at you, you know, we want your, you know, ledger passwords and all the rest of it, blah, blah, blah. Well, then you'd know exactly what it's about and I'd be suing the backside out of ledger as well if that uh, happened to me. Uh, but look, again, the chances of that are probably pretty low. Uh, and again, you know, I'd say for most of us in the crypto uh, sphere, we don't have that much crypto that, you know, it'd even make it worth uh, someone possibly going to jail for the rest of their lives and all the rest of it. But again, still worrying. All right, let's move on. So we'll refresh this. This has been sitting here for a little while. So $682 billion. So the market just continues to move up. Uh, again, there has been some pullbacks, though, as we can see in coins. But generally, it's just going up. So let's have a refresh and see where we're at. 682, 679. All right, so there we go. Just in the last few sort of, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour or so, uh, we have dropped sort of 3 billion. And we can see right there in the last hour. So prices are obviously down. But Bitcoin is ranging around that kind of, you know, high 23, starting to push on that $24,000 mark. And again, it's Monday evening here, so it's going Monday morning. The CME and everything, you know, is getting ready to open in saying that it is Christmas and that. So we'll just have to wait and see. But if Bitcoin continues to kind of just range sideways for a while, altcoins are going to continue to pump. And look, they haven't even really pumped yet. I know people are thinking this is a big pump. And don't get me wrong, coins are doing amazingly. You know, Litecoin up 40% in seven days. The big moves are still yet to come. Wait until we get to, you know, sort of, I don't know, September, December next year, maybe even January, February, the year after. They are going to be absolutely off their heads. If you haven't been here and haven't, you know, experienced what a full, frenzied, parabolic crypto run is like, strap yourselves in uh, and get ready. But look, in saying that, the, the dates are not confirmed. I'm just going by previous history. The previous two bull runs have been, you know, their peak has been in December for Bitcoin at least. Uh, and then the altcoins in the last one, they ran into sort of early January. So again, you know, if history repeats itself, it should be around about the same time. I know BitBoy talks about September the 28th being the day that he sees the cycle peak and he's put up the graph showing that. So look, somewhere between sort of September to maybe February 2022 uh, is likely where the peak, you know, of it is going to be. But there's no guarantees it could happen a whole lot earlier. Have your plan, have your strategy. All right, let's have a look though. Gas crept up a little bit, so 50, that's not great. But look, it's been worse. It was 100 and something not that long ago. And look, it was up around two, 300 for a while there as well. So, you know. It's not all bad news, but geez, single digits is where we would really like it. Bitcoin dominance has crept into that 65%. I think that institutional FOMO uh, and everything is really starting now. Again, the early players, they got in before it went over its old all-time high. Now that it's finally over its all-time high, you know, that's where it starts. And look, once Bitcoin itself... This goes over $1 billion. I'm talking Bitcoin alone, not our market cap. This is, uh, sorry, a trillion. Once it goes over a trillion, that's when the real big money will start to move into Bitcoin. Like, you know, unbelievable hundreds of, you know, millions and trillions and billions of dollars uh, will really start to come in because it's still, you know, people get excited. Oh, this is nearly at a trillion dollars, the overall market cap. Wait until you see what happens when Bitcoin 
uh, to Bitcoin's price once Bitcoin itself hits that $1 trillion mark. And look, that could happen this run. But that is when really big institutional money will start to pile in, not just the early adopters. It will be seen as a global asset and reserve and all the rest of it. And then, you know, again, you know, there's talk about maybe Bitcoin makes it to 400000 half a million dollars uh, in this run. Now, again, I just want to stress, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor and I'm not saying Bitcoin will go to that. But let's just say if it did, if it went to half a million dollars, again, that means this has got way over, well, not way over, but it's over a trillion in Bitcoin market cap itself. You know, the volatility of it would have severely reduced. We won't see the massive lows anymore and we won't see the massive highs anymore. Uh, once we hit that trillion dollar mark, you know, still be volatility, don't get me wrong, it's just the way these cycles run but it'll be severely reduced. I don't know if you'll ever see those kind of gains again, but look, that's all hypothetical. It's just really hard to know. But you know, even Dan Held was saying uh, on Altcoin Daily that you know, it's possible that it could go to a million, half a million to a million dollars in this cycle. Now again, he's not saying that's what is what is going to happen. He's just saying once the Bitcoin market cap hits that 1 trillion dollar mark, Bitcoin alone it suddenly changes a whole lot of things and you know even more money will start to pour into it again and then people will just you know again you know they won't be selling it will literally be that asset reserve uh, and it'll be held onto and, and i won't say won't sell at all but you know if it made it to a million in this run you're not going to see bitcoin under two hundred thousand dollars ever again you just you won't and again unless there's something catastrophic that happens to the network or, you know, for whatever reason, something else comes out that's better, which at the moment I just think is unlikely. And, you know, I love thinking about this stuff, you know, thinking what would happen if Bitcoin market cap, you know, made that trillion dollar mark and, you know, then what kind of, you know, institutional money would really flow into it. I love thinking about that because, look, it won't stop at Bitcoin. It starts at Bitcoin, and that's where basically everyone starts who comes in. They start in Bitcoin, then they'll tinker with Ethereum and XRP, and then after that, they're just going throughout all the coins trying to find the next big thing. So that old saying, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats, and it literally will, but that doesn't mean they've got, uh, you know, they're not going to last forever. It just means... Uh, that everything will rise for a certain period of time, at least this kind of bull run. Look, my personal belief at the moment, Bitcoin's here to stay. It's proven itself. Doesn't mean it can't have a fault that we just haven't found. I just think it's unlikely. I think Ethereum's here to stay. It's been around for quite a while. Uh, again, regulated, regulated, Litecoin. Again, I think it's here to stay. I think institutions are going to pile into this. They still have a good chance to get in early and get a foothold and all the rest of it. There's still plenty of coins available out there and there's still plenty left to be mined. So they've got time to get into Bitcoin. And I think that's what's going to happen. Also regulated. You know, you look at PayPal and things like that. They can come and buy Bitcoin cash for $356. They can buy Bitcoin for basically, let's say, $24,000, or they can buy Ethereum for $641, or they can buy a Litecoin for 100 bucks. It's just that human psyche. They're going to go to Litecoin, and that's why Litecoin is starting to pump so much. And look, don't get me wrong, we just saw Bitcoin Cash uh, change just then. It's pumping as well. That is just the way it's going to be. Bitcoin Cash, I think, has now solidified itself. It won't be going anywhere. Again, it's been regulated. It will be used, but it just won't be Bitcoin. It's not going to overtake Bitcoin as that store of value. It may be used as a Bitcoin Cash, like it says, actual cash. So it'll be like Bitcoin, but more like cash. And again, really similar to Litecoin. So I think those two will battle it out uh, for quite some time. Um, but I think the fact that it's called Bitcoin Cash will kind of put people off a little bit, especially once they've been around for a while. They'll just go, oh, it's trying hard to be Bitcoin, but wasn't. And again, we'll have to wait and see. That's more personal opinion. But again, I, I don't think any of, I don't think Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin or Bitcoin Cash are going anywhere now. I think their fate has been sealed in a good way uh, and they are going to be around 
for ages. They are going to be new money. They are the new money. Uh, I'm not saying that you know you won't still have your you know your local sort of uh, cash. You will, but these will be used as an international sort of cash. You know, you're going overseas, uh, and let's say again you're in Australia, uh, and you're going to the US, and you don't want to exchange to you know the US dollar. It's easier to just exchange into Litecoin, go over there and spend Litecoin and all the rest of it. I really do think the local government dollars, you know, your local dollar and that, at some stage, they'll kind of just disappear. They won't be needed anymore when you've got these universal monies. We're a long way away from that. I don't think that's happening overnight or anytime soon, but I definitely can see something like that happening in the future, you know, 50, 100 years down the track. Who knows? Could be soon or maybe never happens. <laughs> anyway, I'm off on a bit of a tangent. All right. In the last 24 hours, what have been the big movers? What's really pumped? Whew, Dogecoin on an absolute run. That generally means alt season is starting. Dogecoin is one of the first to run. So uh, look at that. And that's had a great pump. Uh, TikTok's really uh, getting into Doge. So a lot of that is, you know, uh, young people just, you know, putting a few dollars in. So, you know, if you're can get onto that early you can do quite well i got onto doge earlier in this year uh and doubled my money uh in a matter of a week and a bit uh and then i cashed out took that money uh and watched doge basically fall back down so i've missed this one which is sad but i'll be keeping an eye out uh, in the future because doge just regularly does this all right zillica i mean we look at these gaps uh these moves not gaps 55 percent 58 percent 30 percent 30 percent uh, 20%, just 122% Swiss Borg. So there you go. There's been some amazing movers. NEM, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff. But what about losses? Is there any heavy losses? Uh, no, not too heavy. I mean, 12%, don't get me wrong, once it gets into those double digits, that definitely hurts a bit. But again, look how much it's up over the seven days. So again, Thor chain, that's probably hurting a bit. Uh, v chain not doing so well, but look, that's all right. It's, it's still up for uh, the year and all the rest of it, but really single digit losses, they're not that bad in the grand scheme of things when we think about uh, cryptocurrencies, you know. Double digit losses hurt, uh, but again, single digit gains really are nothing in the crypto space. So it's a funny old space where people are like, ugh, it went up 10%, is that all? And, you know, goes down by 10%, and you're like, oh, yeah, that hurt a bit, but whatever. Traditional markets, people would absolutely be losing their minds if that were to happen. Come across to crypto, and that's just a typical sort of, you know, day for us. But again, I think some of this is that weekend pullback. So we go back to the market cap, uh, and we can see here, maybe this is the kind of weekend retracement. Now let's go over to the actual Bitcoin chart itself. So we can see we've had uh, quite a run here. And we did technically, I guess, have a bit of a pullback, but it was yesterday. So that'd be kind of Saturday uh, for over in the States and other parts of the world. For us, that was uh, f sort of, well, no, that, yeah, that would have been Sunday for us here in Australia because this is Monday in Australia, uh, but uh, kind of Sunday, Monday uh, for over in the States. But anyway, Bitcoin has had its move and now we're waiting, you know, for the Monday morning markets, you know, again, the, the, uh, CME and all the rest of it to open up and for trading to start and to see what happens to the price of Bitcoin. I mean, br Bitcoin runs 24-7, 365, 66 days a year, no matter what. But the big trading, again, is generally done during the week. And again, generally, if you buy Bitcoin early in the week and sell it around about sort of midweek, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a... A system that kind of goes on there now it's not exact it's not 100 percent, and you can't follow it to the exact rule like that but generally that is what it does it'll sell off over the weekend you buy back monday morning you sell sort of wednesday night uh thursday night it'll sell off again over the weekend and then you buy back sort of monday morning uh it's a cycle that repeats itself uh quite often but uh, again it's not an exact science but just for those of you who want to try your hand at trading and all the rest of it Go back and check the charts and you can see that it does do something similar again. But, you know, sometimes it'll sell off Thursday night. Sometimes it'll sell off Friday. Sometimes it'll sell off Saturday, sometimes Sunday, sometimes even early on the Monday, sort of, you know, midnight 
Sunday night, i.e. midnight, uh, Monday morning, whichever one you want to call it, it can sell off there. So again, it's not an exact science and it all depends, you know, whether you're in a bull market and a bear market as well. So, you know, just beware when you're out there. All right, Litecoin USD. This chart looks very similar to this chart. You can just see, but Bitcoin has been a whole lot more sort of volatile uh, and, and has outgained. But Litecoin looks very similar. Again, this is in the USD though. So let's have a look. Is this uh, Litecoin to Bitcoin? Let's see how that's going. Litecoin to Bitcoin. And we'll go here. Litecoin has definitely been performing well, but has it been performing better than Bitcoin? Lately it may have been, but not overall for the year. Well, I don't know about earlier in the year than when I got in, but uh, my Litecoin hasn't done quite as well. But all right, we can see that we finally broke out of that uh, sort of trench. We could see that we were just oscillating in there, oscillating in there, faked out, pulled back down, faked out, pulled back down and then we've actually broke out and now we've confirmed this but we can see there's a little bit of a pullback here but again it's going to be Monday morning soon over in the states uh, you know and parts of Asia and all the rest of it are starting to wake up and they'll start to uh, trade again will we see a correction or will we see further push to the upside or is Bitcoin just going to travel sideways and we really get that big crazy alt season that everyone's expecting love to know your thoughts you know do you think the altcoin season, like the real crazy one, is about to start? Or do you think we're still a ways? Is that going to come later on, you know, maybe around, again, you know, sort of March, June uh, 2021? Love to know your thoughts. Uh, put it down below. Uh, I'm always looking for, you know, other people's opinions. I don't claim to know it all. Uh, and I love to get uh, you know a second, third, and fourth opinion on things that I'm thinking. I do think an alt season... Uh, is going to come. I don't think this is it at the moment. I think the alt season is probably going to come, yeah, sort of March, April, May, June next year, I think is when it's really going to start to go off its head. I'm not saying we won't have minor pumps from the altcoins like we already have, but I don't think we're going to see the crazy stuff uh, until a little bit later. Could be totally wrong though. All right, stay safe, be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Hit that like and subscribe button down below and I'll see you next time.